right, man. I quite like it indeed. So like a lot of things on this channel, and indeed in this shed, eh, a lot of it's going to be made out of gas bottle, which is just the crack, because I've got a lot of them, you know, I've been buying them, I've been giving them, I've been gifted them. I've, been got, I've got a lot of gas bottles, yeah? So I'm going to be making those plates out of gas bottles, so the first thing I need to know is how wide the section is that I'm going to need. Yeah? So I've got me a... Uh, me barrel. I'll call it a barrel. I don't know what to call it. The stock. I'll call it stock. I've got me stock. Yeah. And we're just going to find out what uh, what dimensions it is. Yeah. So it's 30 mil box section. Because it is indeed 30 mil either way. So 30 mil. So I need a centre section on here of 30 mil. Yeah. So we're just going to take the measure. A square. Sorry. Mark out 30 mil right there. Actually, I can do one better. Where is it? There we have it. 30 mil. So this is the stuff that I made the, uh, the stock out of. Yeah. So straight away, that's going up the middle. We'll check that that's where. Indeed it is. So this is my stock. So I'll just mark that down as stock. So that's the stock. So what I may do... Let's bring it out to say here. Let's just play around with that. Let's do that. Yeah, I'll put five. I'll put fifty mil on either side. You know, so that'll give you a total of hundred and thirty mil. So I'll have the thirty mil of the stock, fifty mil on either side, so hundred and thirty. So I'm going 130 across, and then we've got to work out these things. Yeah, so where's my other springs? So I've got my springs. Now I don't want them being so close that they can interfere with each other. Yeah. So each one is, I'll go with 30 mil. You know, I'll go with 30 mil, because I'm actually showing up at 50 mil for both of them. So if I go 30 mil, give myself that gap in the middle. So if I have them this far apart, but we're going to have four of them. Yeah. So we're looking at 120. This is at 130. I'm just going to go 130. I'll cut myself 130 mil square. Yeah. Because then it'll give us a bit of space at the top, a bit of space at the bottom, so that I'm not just catching on the ends. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a very good idea. So I'll cut myself that out. So coming up from this mark, we'll be coming up here, and we'll be coming up here. And then once we're at 130 mil, coming across here yeah with a recess in the middle so I may just end up with a square cut out to the middle matching up with the second eye that'll work out cutting a square is going to be a nightmare 30 mil big with a angle grinder but I'll get it done so I'll do that I mean I would like it to be all the way up that would be easier too but if I do it all the way up the ones at the top will be They'll have a lot of play. I mean, I'll be able to weld struts down to meet this. So I might give that a play around. I just think looking at it, and it's open in the centre with a bolt coming out of it, would be fantastic. Plus, I'll then be able to aim. I'll not be aiming through a little, tiny little hole. I will need this to be open. So all of this is going to get cut out. And the barrel's attached underneath while the stock's attached. So I'll do that. So I'm going to cut myself a plate. Obviously, as I say, everything's gas bottle. Gas bottles are us. I've got myself this bad boy. Hopefully the bottom here is 130 mil. If not the top, if the top is, I'll use that. If the bottom's needed to be used, I'll use the bottom. If need be, I'll use both. But I'll get a cut out of this and I'll come back.
and they will have it. Yeah, best attempt at a straight plate that you're going to need on an apocalypse crossbow. So I found myself a perfectly straight edge. I'm just going to mark this up against the next one. I mean, this hasn't got to be a perfect job, as a lot of things aren't. Um, but it's going to make my life a little bit easier if I've got it level on both sides. So I'm just uh, looking about, find me tape measure, where's it run to? Things run away. Or things fall on the floor, that's the more likelihood, like likely story. Yeah, so I've got these two straight lines now. We'll bring it down to 130. Plenty of meat left on it. Marking it there, and then we're going to come up here. Yeah, that could do a bit sharper. I love this jug, so all you need to do is sharpen it to get a good point. Just rub it on your table a little bit, and you get a good line. Whoo, lovely line! And then come across. Guess what? 130. Give it a mark. Your nice new pristine lines. <coughs> that's where we're going to be coming in. Yes, yeah, this one I'm going to be square yet. So I only need one square sag. So the rest can just be marked and cut as one. Whew, yeah. So yeah, we'll have it. 130 millimeter square. Mark one side there, I'll get all of this trimmed off, maybe I'll move this line over a bit so I'm not cutting off a big bit and a tiny little sliver, because slivers are a bit more tricky. Yeah, so I'll get this cut out, actually I'll leave it so I get a, a nice strip. I'll be able to use that strip for something. I need a finger guard for a, a future project that I'm going to be doing. But yeah, we'll have it, that's getting cut. And then I'll mark up and uh, measure the, the gap that I'm cutting out of the centre. I'll measure that later, I'll come back. There we have it. This should be 130 square. Perfection. Perfection. Kind of hot, but perfection. 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 130 millimeter square. Who would have thunk it that the blacksmith can cut a square out? I mean, I know kids all over the world are doing it in classrooms. Check me out. And yes, I'm being sarcastic. I don't know if sarcasm comes across well on YouTube. I don't know if I put sarcasm across well at all. I made a little video on the allotment where I was moving some paving slabs, which honestly weren't that heavy. They were little bits broken off bits. And I'm only like, ooh, and that's so heavy. And people are being laughing at us, being like, hey, you can't lift a paving slab. <laughs> it's sarcasm, lads. You know, I love this move anything i'll move your car i will roll your car over in the street not the person about the paving slabs i found it funny that he was laughing at asda yeah i'm not gonna roll your car over i like it but uh yeah like sarcasm get used to it it's a sarcastic channel didn't you know I had a play about with my spring where I want it to be, that's about where I want it. I made a little mark, which is 10 mil in. So all the way up, I want a 10 mil gap all the way up on either side. And I've looked, just from having the 30 mil marked off, it's pretty much perfect. So if I leave a 30 mil gap between each bit on my 130 mil, it's lovely. Because then that will leave me with enough meat on the top to stop it bending a bit. I mean, I'll be reinforcing it anyway, I'm assuming. I mean, I'll give it a go without reinforcing it. But I see myself having to quickly dismantle it and reinforce it. This will probably bend, but with it being right on the front, I'll just be able to hammer it flat again. So I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, so every 30 mil from the centre, 15 mil either way, make it 30 centre. And I have a hole on both sides. 
happy days. I'll get those marked now and roll. So I've cut myself this extra bit of the original stock box section that's going to be coming and welded on here. Uh, I will be grinding back this little well to make it flat so that fits in nicely. Uh, cleaning it up to a certain degree. So that's going to be there. The original piece that I cut off the top will be welded back on the top but right at the end put it up against it and then the plate will be welded to the entirety of it. Yeah so obviously the plate that's where this bit's going to get welded to is right in here. Yeah, so I'll be able to weld it flush here, yeah, flush here, yeah, under and not underneath on the insides here. Yeah, the underneath's obviously going to already be welded to the stock. Yeah, so it's just going to give us that sight so that I can. This is where the arrows will exit, and then this just means that I haven't got to be looking through, <laughs> pretending to be able to see through this tiny hole and being like, what's above it? Yeah, 
it's about the safety of it, but actually being able to see your targets is a great thing when you're trying to shoot them. It's great. So, I've done a bit more work, it's still very hot, it's been raining so I had to take the camera equipment in so I skipped ahead a little step, so you've missed the section but it's fine, all I've done was weld the plate on the front of it, yeah, so I've got the springs mocked up on it, and this is what we're left with, yeah, so obviously the springs are just uh, akin to do what they want, but as you can see, this is the front plate, the arrow is going to come out of this little hole, and I've got before springs which will attach to the arms, so when I cut them, I've got all eight of them at once, ready to spring out and shoot things. Yeah. Now the good thing is, is that if it's too powerful, I can remove springs. Yeah. I've got all of those eight, eight holes in. Maybe I only need four of them. Maybe I do the centre two. Maybe I do the top one and the bottom one. Maybe I do the top one and the third one down. I don't know. Maybe I'll have six springs on it, eight springs on it, four springs on it. Maybe I'll just keep the two and just do little, little spud spuds. I don't know what that word is, but I like it. Yeah, but as it stands, I quite like it. it my housemate mentioned it, and it does. He was right. It reminds me of the uh, shotgun guard, the front shield on Army of Two. If anyone played Army of Two, you'll know what I'm on about. And you just got the front guard. Whoosh! And I quite like it. I mean, I've got all of this space underneath. I could put a spike on it. I could put a knife on it. Some sort of bayonet for just the jabby jabby. Yeah, you're coming at me. I have my table loaded. Just jab. Hoo it would be great. So with this, obviously it's 130, or it should be, yep, 130, so I need this to be square, yeah, so I can bring this all the way over to 24 just about, it's 240mm, which gives us a 120mm section, yeah, now I don't know if that's going to be too big. Because that would make my point somewhere around here, so I'll just mark that off square. Nice and square. Put that line in. Get this line marked off. <coughs> so that's 130mm by 120mm. Yeah. So with it being 130 big, I need 65. There's my centre point, yeah? Now I need this to come over for the box section to get welded in. So what was the measurement on the actual bit? Yeah? So I want this to be a perfect square, right up against the box section. Yeah? So from the farthest point from the, the arm on the hole, makes it... Do, 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 one, two, three, 13 mil. So I'm going to come 13 mil in, maybe leave a mil gap. Yeah, so actually I'll make it 15. So we'll put 15 there. And mark this down. 15 here. Mark it down. This will be 
where the holes are in that strip there yeah then I'm going to need a 30 mil actually what's the section what's this that I'm using 25 this is a 25 mil 20 and 5 25 that at 25 mil I'm a bit off there we go we'll mark this at 25 mil there we go so this will be getting welded in there this is where this box section is going to get welded so I might actually use this piece will be going in there because obviously then that brings us to here which gives us plenty enough fine that's going to be a 25 mil section cut out of it so there's loads of meat in that to be able to get all the parts that we need so this is where we're going to be starting from so I don't know if I want just straight lines yeah I mean I could do something fancy but this isn't this isn't a, a decorative one this is just a strong and simple crossbow you know it's going to look quite nice being strong and simple so I don't need to do all the decorative parts if I ever revisit and make a fancier crossbow I'll do something nicer than just having this weird triangle so a triangle up to this bit that's going to be left in I'll get that cut out mark it up on the other side cut that one out and I'll be able to start welding So I've cut, used those off cuts from uh, cutting out the arm pieces and I've just sized them up here. So I need this bit to reach out to the edge of the plate and I need this bit to only go as high as to not interfere with the arm. Yeah, so the first one's going to go right there. So I've just put a couple of little marks on with my chalk. I'm going to get this mark off and this will be the first reinforcement plate. Which I quite like the sound of, you know. My crossbow is too powerful, so I've had to call for reinforcement. Love it. Yeah. So that's getting cut off there. So this section at the top is what's going to be getting put in. Let's do it. So just like that, we've got one. What have I knocked on the floor? A bit of nothing. Let's check this one's at a square, that's never a square, it's a square I've not cut through properly. Let's cut through it. That's nice and square. that's these two I'm going to clean these up with the uh, flappy disc and I'll get these welded on as soon as I'm finished uh, doing it really get those welded in place and I'll have that first bit of uh, support I've then got the rest of them I've still got the other two and I'll be able to get the top ones done and then I'll just have to cut myself some triangles for the bottom two happy did so there we have it, I've got all of the uh, support bars welded in place, looks a bit like a Union Jack, I mean if I turn this over and we'll look from the front, a bit like a Union Jack, I quite like that, I might leave that, I mean all of the white will come off but there'll still be a bit of a distinct mark and showing where the bars are welded in and I quite like the fact that it looks like a flag, so yeah, job the good in.
tell you them guys, so I've already made one up so you can see that I've welded these cross pieces in. So this is the front, so you can see the uh, the little chamfer where I've just taken the corner off to stop it clicking as I load. And I've put this cross piece in, and this is what we're going to mount a plate to. Yeah, this is where the springs are going to be received on the off. Yeah, spring receivers, I'll go with that. So this is the uh, the progress so far. I'm just going to film the last section. I didn't want to film all of it. I thought it would be a bit monotonous, just adding the weld, adding the weld, adding the weld. I'd be filming, stopping, starting, everything. You've already missed us start the crossbow, so why not let's just do a little bit of the, the, the boring bit, you know? So we'll come in. I've just got this other one as a size reference. We'll come in. The most important thing is that I don't cover the holes that the springs are going to be going into. Yeah, everything else is fine, really. In, re in realistic terms, everything else is fine. So there we go, I've got it nice and lined up. Everything's going to be great. Got myself a weld rod already, ready to go. I'm going to put a big tap on it, get all this welded up, and then I'll be able to load all the springs onto it and have a test fire. Yeah, happy days. Let's get going. There we go, I've got one of the welds on. This is how it's going to look. Happy days. Check that. Get myself a fresh rod. We'll just get rolling. There we go, so we've got some nice welds on on the back, it's got a nice messy looking weld on the front so that when you're looking down at it, when you're facing it, when it's facing you, that's the one, when it's facing you, you're not going to see the pretty welds. You can see these welds, they are big and nasty and ugly, yeah, it's the apocalypse, no one can weld in the apocalypse, not adequately.
There we have it. I mean, I did melt me uh, <laughs> this smudge is me bowstring. Yeah, it's a me new bowstring, but I've got about 20 meters of the stuff, and it's three core, and I'm only using one of the cores, so I've got 60 meters of the stuff. I've probably used a meter. So I've got 59 meters of the stuff. It's fine. I was hoping it was going to uh, survive, but well, things didn't go to plan. And there we have it, the man killer. It's been killing the cardboard box on the side of the shed for the last 20 minutes, but uh, yeah, let's get my head away from where the arm opens up. As you can see, it's worked out quite nice. Everything's assembled, everything's put on, everything's ready. Hopefully, if I can get a GoPro off somebody, that's kind enough to give us a GoPro. I'll be coming in and uh, making a little training montage, shooting a skate crew that I've got to make on the allotment. Be great, be fantastic. Peace! Maybe it's the arrow. Switch it out. So I've got this big steel shanked one, which is a bit naughty and it's a bit dangerous, but you know, I'm not going to shoot anybody. Just me shed. Now it's a solid steel shaft, so it doesn't quite fly as easy as the uh, the little aluminium one that I've got there. Sorry, aluminium for them uh, for them Americans that might be watching. But yeah. Nice steel shaft, heavy as can be, can we fire it, yes we can, right there, crossbow shooting, happy days, I'll, uh, I'm going to do a bit of a training montage, I think I'm going to weld the springs on rather than just let them pop off after every shot, wasn't doing this when I was playing with it last week, don't know why it's doing it now, but I'll get that welded, and I'll be back from your trainer montage with a little uh, GoPro stand that's still yet to be uh, added to the crossbow. And a trigger system. I'm sick of flicking it up with a thumb. Peace.